Professor from Weizsäcker. Last year we had together an oven of the future and the title was Living Space Earth. We need quality innovation for our future and this year the complement we need a new enlightenment for our full world, hand in hand. What is your wish for education of the future of the universities? I suppose that in our days, education is changing its function quite dramatically between the old days where early education, school and then university was the thing to do, and today it's recurrent education, it's re-education that you need. Because at least intellectuals, but even craftsmen, will change jobs three times, in my case, ten times in my life, you know? So I have to relearn. And that is the trend of the day. Universities should indeed offer short period re-education, modernization and integrating customary gold, well-established wisdom and technologies with the new challenges. So bringing together what seems to be a part. My name is Wolfgang Greta and I have a background working for Fraunhofer Institute for Applied Information Technology. And uh, I have a question. We started, I think, 15 years ago to center our software development around uh, user needs. Are there other perspectives for applied research the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft should follow to achieve a good environment or to achieve other positive things for humans. During the last 30 years, there has been a trend worldwide of considering usefulness what is profitable. And the imperative of sustainable development challenges this priority. And if you help the new generation understanding what it will mean to have um, to overcome poverty, hunger and bring it together with the goals 13, 14, 15 and in a way 16 and 17 meaning a healthy world regarding climate, a healthy world regarding oceans, a healthy world regarding um, biodiversity, which for conventional microeconomic thinking doesn't exist. I believe that would be a task for institutes of applied science, Fraunhofer typically is that, and could also become a quality criterion for our country compared to, let me say, more primitive criteria that are applied mostly in the Anglo-Saxon world. So I'm teaching digital media, media conception, media production. What would you say is the responsibility of the media? Well, media is essentially communication, of course. Uh, the media that are dominating tend to be as primitive as possible. And that is in a certain contrast to the sciences. Scientists, uh, sciences have to be complex, or they are trivial. So, uh, for science media, you need a good compromise between the complexity of 
scientific reality and methods, and understandability. Well, you know that. Yes. <laughs> Um, I have a rather general question. Do you have an advice for people, especially for young people, for students, um, what we can change in our everyday life which will actually have an impact on our environment or is it all just politics and economics or is there something we can change? Most answers would apply to everybody, not only to students, including mobility behavior, not racing from place to place like mad, including coming together with people of different backgrounds, and having a lifestyle in nutrition, in family building, in um, teaching, which can even begin when you are still a student, in accepting the imperative of sustainability which in classical education was not existing. So, it's a lot of challenge. Innovation towards sustainability is something to be invented anew. But I trust your generation will do that. Yes, you said that we have to change the market conditions. And in regard to the full world and the climate uh, crisis, we have to act soon. So I asked myself, what can people do besides uh, changing their behavior or going to vote? What else can we do if we are not a politician or a uh, company? Well, my understanding of democracy is that everybody is a politician. We are at least the electorate. And, uh, so, engaging in political debates is one part of the answer. Not just accepting, but creatively cooperating with people from different corners and thereby get the ambitious politicians respect you and not the stupid ones. So, uh, basically my uh, number one criterion for making things better is prices must tell the ecological truth. I acknowledge that this is not the case at all. Typically, you get unpopular by doing it. So, education has to also make it politically possible of having true prices and thereby creating a disincentive for those stupid people not grasping it. In the schools, our pupils, they sit at chairs they have 45 minutes of, of class and then the next class. Could they, like Alexander from Humboldt, this systemic network principles reach out in biology, geology, English class, geography, and take digital probes and bring them back into the classroom so to interact in a more lively way way during their passage of learning? I think it's a splendid idea to have complex topics in the school, meaning interdisciplinary work. Practice is never disciplinary. 
Practice is always interdisciplinary. And that would require a kind of teaching which is not one-way teaching, but reactive teaching. And also including um, different disciplines, different backgrounds, different goals, which, however, has the disadvantage that you cannot measure success so easily. The dominance of disciplines at school, at university, is the easiness of um, quantifying success. But that is in contrast, in conflict with complexity. And my hope is that future primary education and uh, advanced education will be more interdisciplinary and close to reality and not so close to methodology. Um, is there something we, not just as um, people, but as our country Germany, can copy from uh, other countries um, concerning sustainability, like the Japanese train system, something that will, would help us to improve our sustainability? In all likelihood, yes. But so far, the education systems in Asia are slavishly copying what used to be the Western education. And perhaps the most extreme uh, example is uh, South Korea, in which education is essentially trying to copy Oxford and, uh, and mm. all mathematicized, etc. I suppose that Europe has one huge advantage over all the other continents of being multilingual anyway. In Baden-Württemberg, nearly everybody has to learn French, not only English. And this is fantastic. Think of America, they only learn English. And some learn Spanish because the servants speak Spanish. Yes. That's not good enough. And uh, if we not only look at the linguistic side, but at the civilizational side, the French are not only good cooks, but they also have a different relation with the arts, with creation. The Germans uh, may be a little better in analytical thinking, you know. The Scandinavians almost uh, by their geography, I don't know what, think global. I don't know one Norwegian or Finn or Dane who does not know Africa, South America, Australia, etc., uh, and Europe. So, this can become a major advantage of education in Europe. And Erasmus programs and, and the like help support this kind of quality. And I hope that the students like it and not dislike it. Uh, Professor Weizsäcker, you told us in your talk that you are an optimist. Uh, do you have always an optimistic view also about the future? So, if we look at applied research, what do you think in the past was the most influential work that was done, let, let's say, within the last 10 or 20 years? Let me first say, my optimism in part, of course, is sort of psychology, 
but in part is also methodology. If there is a challenge, let's look for solutions. And if you are a basic pessimist, you don't get there. Okay, but the successes of the last 20 years are renewable energies. Until the year 2000, they didn't play any role, except in peasant industries in Africa. Otherwise, not. Um, the digitalization has made it possible to um, understand complex behavior like human brains and systemic changes, which was not so easy with old-fashioned mathematics. And the understanding of the need for sustainability was totally underdeveloped in the 20th century and can be said to have enjoyed recognition and appreciation in the 21st century. However, the forces of old-fashioned knowledge and the forces of returns on investment as the only remaining criterion in the economics um, conflict with those advantages. So the overall result is not necessarily positive. International experience on campus, student exchange, as you mentioned, uh, is also certainly a very important fabric for peace, which we have taken for granted, at least my generation, in the last 30 years. How strong is the importance for peace through the exchange of and collaboration of the young generations? It seems to me that school pupils and students going abroad typically come back with high satisfaction. They experience that those guys with other languages are also humans and can be extremely nice. And if the university makes it amenable, comfortable, reasonable, useful, to have students from abroad. That's great. A uh, lot to me. finally explain what I meant in my talk about cooperating also with Africa. You know, in Africa, there is a concept called Ubuntu, which essentially means you define yourself primarily not as an individual, but as part of a community. And only through the community you can define yourself. And that is something alien to the kind of selfishness individualism which seems to be the dominant cri uh, criterion in the Anglo-Saxon world. Individualism as such is not bad if it is embraced by Ubuntu. Thank you very much, Professor Anthony von Weizsäcker. You can be sure that we will bring the experience from this afternoon for our future also to our partner universities. 
Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank Vielen you. Dank.